Can you click it? Hello, I'm Chevy Cohn from West Hempstead. I am privileged and honored to learn Parak Mandek in Tehillim through Louis Nishmat Rav, my dear friend, Sara Rivka, Bat Rav Nachum, and Mindel. Sarah Lamb's match. Sarah was a woman full of creativity, who was blessed with a charismatic personality. She met each person to favor Panim Yafot with her radiant smile. She always made one feel at home. She's a true example to one who practiced the mitzvah of Achmaset Arfim with love. The house was always open for guests and for learning. Her home was full of laughter and warmth. Her husband, Rabbi Mark Ratch, is an outstanding Magid Shior in our community and the Jewish community at large. I have tremendous Hakarat Hakot for him for the outstanding Shiorim he has given for the last two years and Shabbos Mugarsam Hakodesh, in memory of my dear parents, Rabbi Dr. and Mayor Rebbe, the Mayor and Rebbe Zintelva Zalman, the Kwanam Racha. I also feel a special connection to Sarah's father, the Badel of Hayim. Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb, who is a very dear friend of my dad. I will begin with a short summary of the parak using the Parish Daj Mikra. This parak of Tehillim is a prayer of one who is used to going up to the Beit HaMikdash. Now he has an affliction that doesn't allow him to. He is so sad about this, and he cries out in tears and strong longing to Hashem. The waves of water come into his mind as a symbol of the sorrow and pain that he has suffered. The enemies of the composer are causing him further pain because they are making fun of him. They are asking, where is your God? The composer is trying to ease his soul because he feels in the future he will return and make the pilgrimage, Aliyah Larego. He is confident that he will go to Mizbah Hashem in joy and simcha and pay tribute to Hashem. The Mishmar is divided into three parts. Each part repeats the longing to ascend Aliyah Laredo. The first section, Sukim Bet Tehe, expressed sentiments as allegories to a deer and his thirst and is expressed in words of cries and tears. The composer finishes in words that attempt to persuade his soul to calm down. The second part from Zion to Yeralis, the composer expresses longings and turns to Hashem and a very strong complaint. Lama Shechaktani expresses this also in harsh words. He read Sachsayatmo, as my bones are being murdered. This language we did not see in the first part. Tafid Vav are words of Nakama consolation. The last part is made of a prayer of confidence. He finishes the psalm with the words, He owed Odenu Shuat Panai Elohai. I shall thank him for the salvations of my countenance and because he is my God. King David composed these psalms and gave them to the sons of Korach to be chanted. They were the Levites who were descendants of Korach. The sons of Korach separated themselves from the rebellious group. David and Melech put their songs together with his own song, Vexultation. The parak begins, La Naseah Matkil of Korach. As the deer faints with thirst, calls longingly for the brooks of water, so does my soul call longingly to Hashem. The Ma'am Loes explains that the verse is a cry of longing for redemption. Just as the deer pants to reach the water for his own sake, the sake of his young, so my soul pants with intense yearning. To come to the land of Israel and there serve Hashem. The theme of Israel's longing for the redemption explains an allusion to water. When the Israelites were redeemed from Egypt and traveled in the desert, they were kept supplied with water from Miriam's well, and they were nurtured by the mud. So will Hashem provide for the Jewish people in the future. Hatzikemel. Sama nafshi lelohim el chai. Mataya vove re'ev t'nei elohim. I so thirst for Hashem, for the living God. When will I come and appear before God? And I so long to return to those days when I would go to Yishalayim to the pilgrimage festival. That's a salad. 
I saw Lita Mati Lechem, Yomam Bolaila, the Amore Lai Koha Yom Aye Elokecha. David Amela says, My tears have been my bread day and night, while they say to me all day, Where is your God? David says, During my exile, I wept so much, my tears were as my bread. This shows that weeping satiates the person, then he does not ask for nourishment. Tears have become the bread of my morning meal and the bread of my evening meal. The verse says, Dimati, my tears, singular. Even a single tear is so full that it was my bread day and night. David explains his incessant whipping, weeping, when they said, Where is your God? and brought back the memories of his pilgrimage to Yishalayim. David and Melch were passed on with a large amount of people. In contrast to those who traveled in caravans who were tired, the pilgrims went up to Yishalayim with a voice of joy and praise. The surrounding people were kept silent, dominant. They were not unruly and did not come across the borders because Hashem was with them. According to the Medrash, an angel is created after every step taken by the pilgrim. So some interpret the word Basak as thickest and thorns. In the past, there were trees and protective shade. But now, I am at the mercy of the sun. In the past, I would bring multitudes of festive oil offerings, but now we go up and down in secrecy. David continues to speak consolingly to his soul and her suffering and sorrow over the memory of the early days. Three times in the psalm, David speaks about the soul as cast down. This corresponds to three pilgrimage festivals. People went up to Yerushalayim. There is an allusion to repentance. However awful one's condition, there is no place for hopelessness. Let man continue to strengthen his will and fortify himself. At the end, he'll attain a state of full repentance and yearn for Hashem. Going to Rob Hirsch, they are called the salvations of God's countenance, because they are the salvation which he executes according to his aims and his powerful vision, although it may not be necessarily understood by man. Different from Pasuk Gimel, where there's a hint of feelings of distance from Hashem, where it says, they were as hene elokim. And Pasuk Vav, there's a feeling of closeness be to Hashem. Pasuk ends with, he oden Yeshua Panav. The words Yeshua Panav allude to the prayer of Hallel, Odecha Tiani Tani, that the healing Yeshua. Pasuk Zion, Elohai, Olai Nafshi Tishokach, Akein as Karpa, my soul is full of sorrow. I remember how I came from the land of Jordan, from the Hermon Sea, and from Mount Mizar to make the pilgrimage to Shalayim. I miss the spiritual pleasure which I have known in the land of Israel. This passage reiterates feelings of someone who is in the Gola and longs to be in Yerushalayim. The words, Ela Eskara, Veshbacha Alay Nafshi, remind us of Slicha. That's a bad Asara Hurude Malchus. It says Ela Eskara Rabshi Alai Ishkoka. And a Pasuk Vav, the words Matish Tokachi, Umate Ami Alai, are parallel to the words of Machadodi, Lote Voshi, the Lote Kombi, Matish Tokachi, Umate Ami. Pasuk Vav. The home of the home Kare La Koltina Recha. David is reminded of the beautiful landscape of land of Israel, which brings water of the rains of heaven. As he passed through the hills, he would hear the roaring of the waters rushing powerfully in the channels below. David explains that his soul is so sad, it's cast down as one with an affliction. He calls to the water coming from a pipe on the roof. Plus the test. Your mom you save Hashem Kato or by Lila she wrote in me. The Tila El Kai. The Mashorah brings back to his memory the days of Pilgrim Shushalayim. That day he would walk in assurance that Hashem will command his loving kindness. During the night they would sing like a band of prophets a song of prayer. David continues to speak to his soul. Take courage, but do not be cast down. 
Hashem will command his loving kindness and be with us. Pasuk Yad. Amra le'el tali. Lama shechak tali. Lama kodere like the lacha tali. I will ask Hashem, why have you forgotten me in Ezra? Why do I go mourning under the oppression of the enemy? Pasuk Yad Aleph. The red stuff last motai harfuni sorai. Amram elai kol hayom ayei elokecha. And this reminds us again the ayei elokecha pasuk dalim. The enemies persecute me. They keep saying, "Where is your God?" Their taunts are stored in my bones, and the pain is like murder in my bones. This is an allusion to Israel's sorrow, the destruction of Beit Hamikdash. Last pasuk pasuk yud bet. Why do you so cast down, O oh my soul, and why do you moan within? Hope in Hashem, for I will yet praise him, the deliverance of my countenance. David expresses astonishment on one hand, the soul is submissive and humble, but at the same time, it heaves and moans with sorrow. It's more appropriate to place our trust in Hashem, he will act the deliverance of his countenance and will exalt his name in the world. And that is the real message of this Pasuk and the whole Tehillim, that even in our darkest hours, we must always have the Tachon and Amuna, that Hashem is with us and he is here for Yeshua. We trust that Sarah Rivka, but Rav Nachum will act as our Melis Yosher for us and for Klaal Yisrael.